good news, the next chapter is not very long, and the concepts are pretty simple. I mean, if we spend more than 15 minutes on this chapter, I would be surprised. Uh, just because there's not that much to cover in this chapter, and in a lot of books, it's not even a separate chapter. It's kind of the concepts are mingled in to other chapters, but this textbook sort of covers licensing separately. Because honestly, licensing is just another type of contract. That's all it is. What I love about this chapter is that every time a new edition of the textbook comes out, I'm thinking that either they'll do away with this chapter or it won't be the way it is. I mean, they basically go through and explain what the web is. <laughs> no, we're not going to spend our time doing that. So, okay. You know, it's just acknowledging that there's electronic commerce and so on and so forth. Yes, we have, you know, for those of you that may not know, uh, we're living in an internet society, and yes, we have the web out there, okay? Um, and yes, we have electronic commerce, and yes, believe it or not, there is such a thing as the internet. <laughs> Lo and behold. Um, and the internet has millions of computers that actually use a set of rules that exchange information. Really, are you writing this down? Because this is, you know, this is uh, news to all of you. Uh, and by the way, they are um, actually uh, have pages that are stored on servers that are um, operated by ISPs or internet service providers. Write that down. Um, and this is extremely attractive to conduct commercial activities online. See what I mean? We don't have to spend a lot of, no, this is not gonna be on the exam. Uh, it's just setting the context for electronic commerce. Okay, we get that. Uh, Email, ever heard of it? <laughs> ever use it? Uh, I, I, I uh, recommend it highly. Uh, but here's the thing, emails and the place that they have in contracts law, that's kind of interesting. And we've sort of hinted at this already when we talked about the statute of frauds, right? We said statute of frauds requires certain contracts to be in writing. And we said, you know, the writing doesn't have to be this kind of writing, paper, pen. Right? It can be any form of writing. So indeed, uh, uh, contractual negotiations and contractual agreements uh, that are made via electronic means are fine. They meet the requirements, statute of frauds, uh, and so on. They meet the writing requirements of email, and I would dare say other things uh, as well, text messages or anything that has some, you know, some semblance of, 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 of being reduced to writing is a writing. Right? So the law has really kept up with uh, technological advances. That's really the point here. So what if the use of email is informal? Nobody's requiring you know, contracts to be formal other than for particular types. So who cares if it's informal? It is still a valid contract. Um, I don't want you to remember all of these different names of, 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 of federal laws, except for one in this chapter that I'm going to talk about. But yes, federal law has, you know, with the, with the, you know, the explosion in the electronic age has come abuses, right? So a lot of federal law has been designed to kind of catch up and protect the consumers and businesses and so on. So yeah, there's a federal statute about unsolicited spam advertising and so on and so forth. There could be all kinds of laws. Have you ever looked at your inbox? and see how much spam we continue to get. But anyway, there's federal regulation. Okay, we, we know that. Um, fine, there's this Can't Spam Act, I'm not really getting into that. Um, and there was this case which was sort of interesting, it was Facebook, and this is where, by the way, Facebook is not being sued, but Facebook is actually suing someone else. And what happened here was, and this is, you know, the case is decided in 2011, but which means that the facts of this case are a few years before that. So this is where Facebook is still kind of young as a company. And what happened was somebody uh, set up a Facebook account and was able to get a bunch of different um, user information. And this company was able to just basically send them all kinds of solicitation and spam and that sort of thing. And Facebook has a policy uh, when, that you can't do that. You can't, you know, you can't, solicit <coughs> other people with accounts and so on. So they did something illegal. And they were, so Facebook sued this company under the Can Spam Act, and they won. They won quite a, quite a few millions, and they got an injunction and so on. So that's really the point of this case, which shouldn't be surprising. 
what Facebook does in terms of the information they get from you is a whole other story. Uh, this case is not about that. This case is about someone illegally using a Facebook account to uh, solicit other users. Um, and then there's all sorts of other things that look, you, you know, we may all be out on the web, but there are all other kinds of federal laws, like there's something called the Communication Decency Act that, you know, um, um, you know, the content and so on, um, you know, uh, uh, the, the internet service provider is not liable. So can you imagine, like, if you're an internet service provider um, and someone is get, using your network to post, you know, illegal stuff, uh, you know, pornography and things like that, that is, that is actually illegal, you know, so there was basically a federal law that says, okay, internet service providers are not liable. They're just giving the platform. Uh, you know, if companies do something illegal, they are individually liable. That's really out of the realm of our knowledge base. But yeah, I mean, there are all kinds of federal laws out there. Um, this case, I mean, I'm sorry, this notion, web contract. So, you know, ever been on websites, and before you can even, like, access their material, they make you go through, like, 15 different screens of, like, I agree, I agree, I've read this, blah, blah, blah. You know, you might even have to give them your email or who you work for, blah, blah, blah. You know, they're looking for information so they can market to you. Uh, but more importantly, they're also telling you things that you're agreeing to, but you just really want to get to the content, right? So, yeah, they're, but, you know, but the point here is that everything that you're agreeing to becomes a contract between you uh, and that company, and that's what this case was all, all about. Um, and the question here was somebody bought a, you know, something from Dell, Dell Computers. And, you know, and it turned out to be faulty. And they're arguing that, you know, they should be able to sue Dell. And Dell is saying, no, 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 didn't you read the terms and conditions? And they're like, how could I? I didn't know they were there. And you're like, well, don't you remember when before you installed, you got a screen that said, you know, go to the next page, go to the next page. And you kept hitting next, next, next. And then you hit OK. Guess what? That was the contractual agreement. Now, we all know that we do that all the time. Anytime we load software, anytime we do whatever, not reading it doesn't mean that you're not viable for understanding it and being valuable. And the courts almost always have said, absolutely, the terms and conditions, even if they communicate to you in this click and uh, move on kind of fashion, are perfectly legal. They become, they're just like a contractual term. If you have signed and looked at it, it's broken. So, Understand that, that that's that's that that has to be the case. Otherwise, things would be would be very difficult to do business electronically. And then there's some stuff about electronic signatures. I'm not going to get too much into it, except to say that signature no longer has to be paper and pen. The law will recognize all kinds of e signs and electronic signatures. I won't go worry about the computer agent business and so on and so forth. Um, what I want to now get into is software. Right? A lot of companies today are information knowledge or information dissemination companies, right? A lot of content that people buy, they're not buying a hard copy, they're buying, uh, you know, electronically. And the problem is that these companies are giving you the license to use it, but they don't want you to give away their intellectual property because they make money by more and more people legitimately paying them. Um, so there are all kinds of laws that basically relates to licensing. But the point is that what is a license? It's just another type of a contract, right? In a license, somebody is transferring limited rights in intellectual property to somebody else, right? The licensor is an owner of intellectual property of informational rights who transfers right to someone else who is a licensee, and the licensee agrees to use that property in, you know, in the limited manner in which they bought it, right? So you guys are going to go work for accounting firms and financial services firms and so on, and you're going to use all kinds of software and, you know, research tools and so on. Well, guess what? You're going to be given a user account and an ID, right? Well, you know, your company has paid for a bunch of those username and IDs because, you know, you're, you're, you, know, you want to be able to look up tax, tax statutes and rules and regulations and IRS notices and revenue procedures and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, here's 
company that provides that on a platform, right? But, you know, the company cannot just say, well, why don't I just fly and say, I only need five licenses, but I actually have 500 people working with the company. I can just give them the same username and ID. Well, that is violating the licensing law contract, isn't it? Because you're jipping the, co the company. You know, so essentially that, you know, again, licensing is a contract. And, you know, violating that contract is a breach. A breach leads to damage. Right? So that's really the point of this chapter, and that's really what licensing is. Licensing is, you know, whether it's an exclusive license or a limited license or whatever the case might be, the company is saying that you will use it for a limited purpose. You won't put this information out there on the internet because it is available only through purchase, right? So that's exactly what the point of this chapter is and the fact that licensing agreements are really just a written contract between the licensor and the licensee. That the licensee has to uphold, otherwise the individual contract for which damages will apply. So, you know, that's why I say that it's easy to kind of get through this pretty quickly because we already know this concept. It's just being applied to, you know, intellectual property or electronic uh, property. Now, one or, one or two other quick things in this chapter, you know, privacy in cyberspace, well, you know, yeah, we'd like to think that there is privacy. Um, the point here is that, again, no reason to memorize any of these federal statutes so on, but yeah, federal law makes it a crime. Uh, you know, they're really, I mean, look, laws are kind of going out of their way to kind of be the policeman, to, uh, you know, to have kind of fairness and so on and so forth. But we all know that technology moves a lot faster than the laws uh, that are de designed to regulate that. Um, the point that I want to make in this chapter is one uh, thing, um, and that is relating to domain names. And I think this can easily have been brought into the intellectual property chapter, but it wasn't. It's a separate concept discussed here, but I want to explain this. We all know what a domain name is, right? I mean, if you, you know, but to me, you know, we talk about trademarks and we talk about, um, you know, other types of intellectual property. The fact that you have your domain uh, registered to you is another piece of, huge piece of intellectual property, right? I mean, if someone wants to go find your business, what are they going to do? They're going to search and they're going to hopefully find you and so on. So, you know, but it's really easy to set up your domain name, right? You just pay someone a few bucks to basically, you know, uh, allow you to have that domain name. Uh, but as we know, it's getting harder and harder uh, for uh, people to register domain names because everything is taken, right? These days, you know, it's not just .com, but it's all kinds of different uh, 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 net, you know, addresses that have to be used. But the point of all of this is, and we are to memorize any of this, the point of all of this is that back in the day, and about, when I say back in the day, I don't mean 50 years ago, I mean 10 years ago, 15 years ago, when the internet was just exploding, and companies were sort of as an afterthought, oh, maybe we should register our domain name. You know, today it's a given. Um, there were people out there that were just <coughs> registering domain names because they were available simply to hold them hostage, right? Because what that meant was if that company actually wants it, they'll have to pay them on ransom to do it. And this was happening. And this is what resulted with Congress, this I want you to know, enacting federal law called, get this, the Anti-Cyber Squatting Consumer Protection Act, which basically is a federal law that permits trademark owners, people that legitimately have that business, and famous people to recover their domain names um, if, if what? If someone has registered that name in bad faith. But what does it mean to be in bad faith? Well, number one, the name has to be <coughs> meaning Look, it could be a celebrity name, but that's really not what we care about so much. What we really care about is a business. Right? If I set up, you know, Sharma's, um, something that rhymes with an S, um, Sharma's uh, slippers, if that comes to mind. Right? I have my, my business and I'm making winter slippers, right? And whatever. And it just finally occurs to me, oh my God, you know, I shouldn't just be selling them at, at, at markets and things like that. I should be on the internet. So I try to go on the internet and I look up, Shabbos slippers is already taken. 
Um, you know, and I find out that it's actually one of my customers. <laughs> I just saw that it was open. And, you know, could I sue that person? And what if they say, sure, I'll sell it to you. $20,000 is what it's going to cost you. That's the kind of thing that is happening. So, is a name famous? Oh, I mean, I've sold like 100 slippers, but that's not the point. The point is, I'm legitimately doing business. Uh, and someone else has that name in bad faith, and by bad faith, I'm not saying that they're doing all kinds of weird things. All I'm saying is they're holding me hostage, right? I can sue to recover my company's name and be able to register it for whatever the prices I should have to pay ransom for. And that's sort of what this case was about. You would think that the New York Yankees would have had everything uh, associated with their name already registered, but it turned out um, that, again, in the early days, relatively early days, this case was decided nine years ago, that there was actually a group, a group, a company called Monica, that was selling sports paraphernalia, and they had registered NY Yankees. And, you know, the New York Yankees might have had their website or whatever, but they were using NY Yankees to sell you know, Yankees paraphernalia, and they were not actually related to the ball club at all. The New York Yankees sued, um, and by the way, they were willing to sell it for like thousands of dollars, but that's that's like being held hostage. Courts absolutely said, I mean, it could be anti-cyber squatting, but this here was some other policy or whatever. The court said, absolutely, this is a problem. Mm -hmm. Famous name being uh, somebody else having registered and in bad faith, absolutely wrong. Uh, not only will you get your domain name back, but there might be damages uh, that, be about, that come about as a result of uh, somebody doing this. Uh, 